Mm-hmm. Uh, I emailed uh, West Point. Yes. Mm-hmm. Houghton. Yeah. And uh, they have what are known as the Armed Forces Academies. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, from my understanding, a lot of individuals that want to go to a military academy. Yeah. At West Point, New York officers trained uh, for the Army. Yeah. Future naval officers attend the United States Naval Academy at Annapolis. Yeah. <laughs> the United States Air Force Academy near Colorado Springs, Colorado. Yes. Prepares Air Force officers. <laughs> Then there's the United States Coast Guard Academy at New New London. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I was watching a movie last night mm-hmm, called An Officer and a Gentleman. Yeah. And it was kind of an interesting story where this, this man had grown up uh, with a father that was in the Navy. Yes. And he wanted to fly jets. <laughs> what really caused me a great a- amount of concern. Yes is there's what's known as an officer, and then there's those that enlist in the military. And when they had graduated from their uh, 13-week experience of the DOR, right, uh um, they actually said the oath of office at the commissioning of being an officer of the United States military. Now, this is the same oath of office where it's without mental reservation or purpose of evasion, you know, And for some reason, when you go through this experience of really breaking a person down and rebuilding them and all the difficulties of that 13 weeks, yes, my thought was that every officer of the United States Armed Forces, yes, is personally legally liable. (laughs) Now, quite possibly, yes, it could be that the military has felt no compulsion, yes, to reinforce the idea of the oath of office. <laughs> now, I think that movie was somewhat factual uh, when they graduated. Yes. Mm-hmm. Where some sort of commander, yes, was reading to them the actual oath of office because they take an office <laughs> at the time of becoming an officer. Yes, they do. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm one of these. Yes. And that would. You have a fucking mother. 